are here today. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Tell us who you are, what you're doing here today. I'm uh, George Reese. I'm CTO of Instratus and author of Cloud Application Architectures. I'm Gary Ornstein. I'm the host of the Cloud Computing Show. I do some guest blogging for GigaOM, and then during the day I work at a company called Fusion.io. I'm Derek Harris. I cover cloud computing and general infrastructure for GigaOM. Okay, guys, so we're all bloggers here. Tell me, what are the stories that you're seeing develop here at VMworld, and how do you see it in the context of the rest of the market? Derek, why don't we start with you? Well, so I think just from my cursory glance at the news this morning, right, I think I think we start with one big theme we're starting to see develop this. Thank you. <laughs> is, um, is, you know, kind of this, the, the global expansion of, of VMware, if you will, right? I mean, we're seeing you know, there's new, new clouds popping up built on VMware. We're seeing gl globally managed VMware clouds, right? I think, I, you know, VMware is making its entree into the database database business with its, v, what I forget the name, vFabric um, control. So, I mean, there's, I think, you know, it's, it's a continual every year VMware expands bigger and bigger trend is definitely. The, the tentacles are far and wide, <laughs> definitely. Well, one of the most interesting things I've seen is VMware's expansion into the storage arena. So about a month or so, maybe a little bit more, they announced vSphere 5 with a slew of storage features. In fact, the uh, vSphere blog is on in the midst of some 11 or 12 part series on all of the storage features. And I think that we're going to see a lot more there. And if you remember how VMware so adeptly wedged themselves in between the CPU and the operating system to where the hypervisor is now a primary choice in architecting for the data center, I think we're going to see the same thing with storage, where they've got so many features and so many capabilities that are fitting right in between a CPU and the I.O. subsystems that eventually what I.O. subsystem you have isn't going to matter because VMware is going to have such a pervasive and expansive control layer there that that's all you're going to need. I, I'd say the, the most interesting thing going on is the coming of age of Cloud Foundry. Uh, um, you know, up until now, it's been a lot of talk, but I think it, uh, with recent announcements, you're seeing people actually doing real stuff with Cloud Foundry, and it represents the culmination of all these acquisitions that VMware have been doing over the last couple of years, moving away from virtualization as a product to uh, the whole, what I call the whole cloud in my blog, uh, owning all aspects of cloud computing. So, Gary, the themes that we see here at VMworld, which you're talking about, you know, in storage, you know, as one, how do those contrast to you what you're seeing in the rest of the market? For instance, from players like Amazon Web Services, you know, and others in the in the space, such as you know, Citric, for that matter. Well, I think Amazon is a whole different category because there's no option to run Amazon locally. You can't own your Amazon cloud. And I think if I'm looking around uh, some of the signage at VMworld, one of the taglines is your cloud, own it. So I think VMware is making a very clear distinction that that is not an option in most cases. You can't own it even if you wanted to. Now, Citrix, of course, is a different case because they give you options with the uh, Cloud.com offering an acquisition that happened recently, and then this morning we saw that they expanded the open source uh, arrangement around that. So, uh, y you know, I, I, I think we have to break the, that distinction into companies that do offer uh, end users that are the ability to actually own the, the, the infrastructure and the software to build the cloud from those that don't, like, like Amazon Web Services. And, uh, and, th and that distinction is going to grow over time, I think. There'll be people who say, you know, it's, it's important to me to own it. And if we think about classic enterprise companies, that is likely to remain the same for the foreseeable future. Uh, but then there's plenty of people who don't care about owning it or controlling it to that level of degree. And for those folks, uh, public cloud offerings like AWS are probably going to be just fine. Derek, is that a challenge for VMworld, for VMware? In, in context of what we're talking about here, the Amazon Web Services approach, versus what VMware is doing? I don't think so. I mean, I think if you look at Dell this morning, for example, launching a VMware-based cloud, you know, VMware has I, the number, I think it claims hundreds of, of service provider partners. I mean, it's been a pretty smart play that says, hey, here's our vCloud, here's vSphere, here's vCloud, here's our set of tools, build your own mm -hmm. cloud, we'll run it, and then it's, and then it's you know, starts, you know, have, rolling out technologies like today where, oh, and by the way, now you can manage these all from, this, from a single interface. I mean, it's, 
it, you know, it, it's really trying to, you know, to use the overuse cliche at this point, you know, become the cloud operating system, right? And, you know, so it has you in the data center, it has you in the public cloud if you're a larger enterprise, which is what most VMware clouds target. So I think it's, but like Gary, so I think it's a different play. I don't think you're gonna see a lot of VMware-based clouds trying to compete with Amazon. That's not the business model. And, and frankly, I don't think they can compete, you know, for developers especially. Right. George, I'm, I'm, I'm curious from your, from your perspective, you know, with VMware, what, you know, what Derek's talking about, are, are we in a time of disruption or are we in a time of just another evolution of IT or is it, or is it kind of both? Well, it's kind of both. Um, and, and I actually disagree with his assessment a little bit because uh, the, where VMware does well with its uh, infrastructure offerings is with the legacy applications and you know doing stuff around taking what you've got and making it a little bit cloudy. And, and that's obviously important. We saw that in the cloud switch acquisition by, by, by Verizon, that people care about taking those applications and, 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 and leveraging them in a cloudy environment. But where uh, VMware has a challenge and you know, where they don't do so well at the infrastructure layer mm -hmm. is, is the new kinds of applications uh, um, built for cloud stuff that can auto scale uh, rapidly, can you know, and, and scale back down, uh, can it, where where you know the design for failure stuff. George, isn't though that I mean all the cloud foundry stuff? That's exactly what that is for. So, but but that's you, at the, that's saying? at the platform level, and and uh, and certainly that helps a lot. Uh, in terms of for people who want to uh, leverage that kind of stuff at the platform layer, but if you want to build applications at the infrastructure layer that you know have these self-healing char characteristics and auto-scaling characteristics, uh, the the vCloud infrastructure isn't there. Yeah, I I, I, I can't comment. I don't know well enough. Uh, but my question is, though, it it does seem like. The, the trend is to abstract away from the infrastructure where possible, particularly when the case of you're either refactoring existing applications or developing new applications. Are you seeing something different? Well, that, that's the essence of design for failure. I mean, is that you, you abstract away from infrastructure and that the availability of your application mm -hmm. becomes the responsibility of the application itself. And there are two ways you can do it. One is to go to the platform as a service layer and deploy your applications in a platform as a service container or like Cloud Foundry, or you could use an orchestration layer to, um, you know, to take care of the uh, underlying infrastructure. And there are times when you want to do one, and there are times when you want to do the other. Yeah, I have a question, if I could, for the for the, my fellow panelists. You know, last year at VMworld, we were still coming out of a lot of the infrastructure as a service layer. I think it was just a few months after the spring acquisition had been announced. This year, I think we're seeing a lot and hearing a lot about the platform as a service layer. What, what are we going to be talking about next year? <laughs> um, I think we'll see, you know, from my view, it'll still be about data. You know, that, I think the, the big data story will probably be much more pronounced next year. And I think you'll see that as more platforms emerge and more apps become developed. You know, Tim O'Reilly said in an interview, that we did with him that he said, you know, what was Apple, Apple's killer app? And he said it was the App Store. And because what are, you know, what's the app, what are those apps made of? They're made of data. And so that data story is just going to continue and it's going to continue into other realms, you know, beyond just our mobile devices as we all well know. I mean, it's going to continue into all aspects of our life. And that, that'll ha that's going to be a story for sure. Speaking of the App Store, I think, you know, I mean, so we forget when, when VMworld rolls around and, and it's all vSphere and vFabric and all these things, we forget that VMware bought up, you know, how many software application startups in the past year, I mean. Yeah, that's I, what I was indicating, right? So, so they, they bought so, uh, Zimbra, and they bought Social uh, Cast. Slide, Rocket, and Slide Rocket, and they bought Social Cast. And, and so I think, you know, so we're talking about cloud phones, we're talking about the platform, we're talking about applications, right? And those are all very, very new things. You know, Cloud Foundry launched in what, April? I think next year, we're going to see that stuff all culminating, will, right? Will, yeah. yes, yes. will VMware be the new Salesforce.com? No. <laughs> no. No, why not, George? Uh, I, 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 
first off, I don't see that. I see they have ambitions more towards the Google stuff than the Salesforce.com stuff. And I think their Salesforce.com is too much of a juggernaut to, for them to go after that. I mean, you know, like I said, I mentioned this concept of the whole cloud. They are obviously going up uh, after owning SaaS, PaaS, and infrastructure as a service. Uh, but uh, at this point, they're, they're, if they have any level of um, humility, they would not go after <laughs> the king of SaaS as their first target. <laughs> but, they, but, they are, but, but they are competing more. Do you think this database yes. as a service announcement today is a competitor to database.com at all? I mean, they, they said to me at VMware, they said, well, we consider ourselves the private version of, of database as a service and database.com as the public version. I personally think that the reach into some of these higher level collaborative applications, the, the slide rocket, the, um, the Zimbra stuff, it, is indicative of, I, I think they're keeping their fingers there for a potential big push. I think there's so much on the plate right now with the infrastructure activity, with the, the, the platform activity with Cloud Foundry, there's probably enough to keep everybody busy for the foreseeable future. But I think that when you look at the, the whole pie, you know, how long are we going to want to talk about these infrastructure components or even these platform components as an industry before we just talk about the applications that help us get the work done? I, I don't know when that happens, but I, I just get a sense that it's coming. I think the, the focus on the application is here today. I mean, you, you look at even at the infrastructure layer, you know, my, my company has spent this year focusing on automating the deployment of custom build applications. It's, so it's not a question of, of the application meaning not worrying about infrastructure, software, or PaaS. It's more of a, um, you know, SaaS is, it's, it's, it's analogy. So SaaS is your, uh, you know, is your shrink wrap application, traditional shrink wrap software. Uh, PaaS is more like your traditional ASP stuff, and then what goes in infrastructure is more like your, your traditional custom build applications. And the need for those three kinds of applications doesn't go away because we moved to cloud, it's just the deployment models have changed. Yeah, yeah I think VMware, and, and, and Paul meant, you know, spoke when they launched vSphere 5 a couple months ago, they, you know, pretty much said, you know, we want to get to a place where the infrastructure is down here and, you know, the, as few people, I guess, have to worry about it as possible. We just want to deliver the applications. I think that's coming. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, that it, looks a lot more like Salesforce than it does like some infrastructure provider, even if it's a software infrastructure. Well, is it, is, are they looking at Salesforce? Are they looking at Microsoft? Well, Microsoft, too. I did, a, <laughs> I did a blog post on that at VMware is the new Microsoft, but when you look at the <laughs> Uh, executive leadership, there's something like a combined 47 years of Microsoft experience in the executive suite at VMware, so it's not hard, and also if you read uh, the bio for, for Paul Moritz, it's not hard to see the areas he was involved with and the areas that he's made uh, help shepherd the company towards, uh, particularly the developer focus, the collaboration focus, um, so I, I definitely believe that's the case. You know, I we talk about applications being here, I. It seems to me at least that they're here, but we are like in such a time where it's so early in the game. I mean, you have the fact that people are carrying around two, two devices often, one for work, one for personal, you know, that kind of thing. You know, where, so there's really, so, you know, they're, they're trying to like talk about efficiencies in the enterprise, but I think people are still trying to figure out those efficiencies in their lifestyle and how those two yeah. axes cross. Yeah, well, well that's one of the interesting things about the new development platforms, things like Cloud Foundry, from my understanding, is when you start building applications, if you started today building an enterprise application, one of your primary requirements is make sure I can use it on the phone or the iPad or some mobile device. One of, I, I spoke with someone from IBM and he said from their from their social media group, and he said with, with no, no uncertain terms, the the phone is the number one form factor when designing, especially collaboration software. Yeah. You know, you can you can work it back to the PC set, but you start with the phone. You start with the phone. I mean, even in, in, in you know day to day work, when we put things together, I, I insist with the team make whatever you're putting together in terms of the document shareable easily on a phone, right? So we're reverting a lot of times to ASCII formatting just because folks are busy. They don't want to open attachments. They don't want to look at all this, you know 
file format stuff, just give me what I need in a simple format. Right now, the universal way to do that that's totally in our control is to do a text-based email communication. But I think what's coming is a whole suite of collaboration applications that are targeted to be mobile device first and everything else later. Yeah, and I would point out, I mean, so VMware owns a handful of those now, right? Right. And actually, I mean, to plug our upcoming Mobilize conference, uh, Steve Harrod is, is you know, do, doing a chat about VMware's role in the mobile space. So, I mean, there, there's there's a connection there, right? There's a, there's definitely a, I, I think yeah. VMware I mean, maybe, a, maybe that will be the leapfrog for, for VMworld well, to get into the collaboration space. Yeah. And they come in with this thing of it, mobile first. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that glues it all together, though, is that once you get away from the having two devices and it becomes a true bring-your-own-device world, then suddenly all corporate resources, whether they're public cloud, private cloud, or whatever, have to be accessible anywhere, anytime, and that means the firewall has to start coming down and, uh, and tools like Cloud Foundry and stuff get into play to make the ubiquity of availability a reality. That yeah, I think that's that's all that's all very true. One of the other questions that I do have for you guys is, you know, the the technology progression that we're seeing across the marketplace. You know, we're seeing just incredible amounts of data, but there's also there's some serious bottlenecks inside the enterprise right now, and virtualization is creating major storage issues. Uh, you know, for for companies, the performance becomes a problem, and and, and performance is always a way to, to you know, to just, you know, is, is a way just to kill any adoption. Because, you know, who wants to use a phone that, that, that takes five minutes for the email to come up, right? So are there any themes that you guys are seeing along those lines that are in the back of your mind as, as you go through an event like this? Um, I mean, so, I mean, Gary probably knows this better than anyone, but. I'll let you go first. A solid state. I mean, we're, uh, you, there are. I think you're seeing. I mean, I th honestly, in the past month, I think we've covered like five, you know, almost pure, if not almost pure play SSD storage plays. Yeah. One I of know. them targeted specifically toward virtualization. Yeah. Because I, 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 it seems to be like everybody and their brother and grandmother now has a way to optimize storage for virtual machines, uh, which often includes some kind of solid state or flash media. So. Historically, when you know when you've operated in a in a non-virtualized environment, you had relatively good control over that path between the application and the data. But as you virtualize everything, it gets far more complex. And many people say that they don't feel comfortable virtualizing certain I/O-intensive applications like databases because they get worried about performance, or that they can only virtualize a limited amount of things because they get worried about performance. So flash memory and a, a variety of flash memory-based solutions are a great way to do that. Uh, without putting you know too much of a plug in, I'd invite folks to visit the Fusion I/O booth uh, at the show to get a closer look at exactly what uh, some ways to solve that problem are. George, you have any thoughts? Uh, well, there, there seem to be sort of two parts to your question. It was more of an enterprise barriers piece to it, right. and then there was the storage piece. Uh, and I think one of the interesting things on the enterprise barriers piece is just that. Uh, you know, you still have companies who, you know, they went to virtualization, they bought into VMware because it was going to enable them to reduce procurement time down from three months to three days or whatever. And what did IT do? They came in and they implemented a whole bunch of procurement processes around vir getting virtual machines. It's a, we have a reality today in which uh, the process for getting a virtual machine is the same as the process for getting a physical machine, both in terms of time and in some, I know of organizations that the chargeback model for VM is the same cost as a physical machine uh, and then and then organizations that have learned that once they get a VM that even if they don't need it anymore they don't dare give it up because they don't you know so so as we take it a step further into cloud uh, how do we get IT's hands yeah, yeah. off of that pro procurement right. process well, well, I want to thank you guys very much for joining us today, taking Thanks, some Alex. time out of your day. We look forward to seeing you guys around and uh, reading, your, reading your posts. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having us.